During this virtual macart lesson, we are going to be creating these absolutely spectacular looking creepy forests. Now for this, I am using a small canvas panel. You can use cardstock or even a box canvas if you would like to. I have got a paper plate as a palette with some basic colors. Red, blue, black and white is all you're going to need. Paper towel, large, medium and small paintbrush two pots of water, one for cleaning and one for rinsing. And optional, I've got some creepy cobwebs that I stretched over the top at the end. Now to begin our spooky forest, what we need to do is start with what is the furthest away, which is our background color. It's actually gonna be a two-tone going from a dark to a light. So our whole picture is lit up from the middle, getting darker and darker towards the outside. Sounds tricky, actually very, very simple. So start with your biggest paintbrush and we're going to mix up a nice deep purple to begin with. So I've got my basic colors here, red, blue and white are what we're going to be using to begin with. So I'm gonna take a good scoop of my red, just mix that a little bit, into the center and a little bit of blue Fold the two in, it's looking very, very red, isn't it? I'm gonna add some more blue. I want a nice bluish purple for my Halloween painting. Carry on playing with the colors and make sure you're happy with the shade that you get. Now it's very, very dark. Purple's one of those colors to mix. It's very difficult to see what shade you're working with because the blue and the red are so dark. So add a little bit of white, just a teeny bit, and can you see how that really illuminates the color and shows you what you're working with? I like that a lot. So what I'm going to do is add just a tiny touch of water. I'm not cleaning my brush. I am picking up a teeny bit of water and folding that into my color. Don't want an overloaded brush. We're squeezing some of the excess off. And here we go. Now, before I do anything, protect your surface if you would like to. I'm working on my paint table onto a canvas, so I don't mind getting paint on it. Lay some kitchen towels down, maybe even cut open a bag and put your canvas on if you don't want to get paint on your surface area. Now, think rainbow. I am going to be painting a nice arch using this lovely dark purple shade here using lovely long sweeping strokes. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous color. A nice rainbow going around the outside. Don't worry about going all the way to the ground because we're gonna be having a lot of dark there later and you're not even gonna see that. So don't worry about that. Now what I'm going to do Without cleaning my brush, I'm going straight into white. Apologies, I have to work rapidly at this step. So I get colors on before it dries. So a little bit of white, pause if you need to guys. Position your brush just underneath what you just painted and follow that rainbow arch. Push it out, there we go. And the two blend together, sweeping strokes. Wonderful, look at that. Don't worry if it's a little streaky. That just adds to the creepiness of it. Blending the two together. Haven't cleaned my brush, didn't pick up any water. There we go. Blending, following that rainbow arch. And we're gonna repeat that again and again and again, just picking up a little bit of white until we get to the center. So again, not cleaning my brush, picking up white, positioning it underneath the color. So I'm painting with just white. That's mixing with a little light color that's left on my brush. And then when I push it out into the purple, I get a smooth transition from one color to the next. Vary the pressure. If you're pushing really hard and getting a lot of color off the brush, take off the pressure and just gently smooth the brush over the surface. Now, paint is very forgiving. I love acrylics. If you're taking your color and it's really, really dark all the way to the center, 
so that you don't have a light source, it looks like someone's turned the lights off, that's okay. Let it dry. Once it's dry, go back in and add some light to the center. If you try and tone down the dark whilst your paint is still wet, what's going to happen is the dark colors are going to be overpowering. They're going to keep eating away at the light colors and you're going to end up just putting more and more and more paint on the surface, which is going to take a long time to dry. So be patient, let it dry for a second, then add some white in the center and push it out. There we go. Creepy. Okay, so our background is done. What I'm going to do is look after my brushes. I've got my cleaning water and my rinsing water. I never leave paint on my brush and just throw it to the side. The paint will dry and that will ruin my brushes. We take care of our tools. So I'm cleaning off in my dirty clean water. This is for getting most of the paint out, jiggling around. There we go. Now the brush is pretty clean, but now it's full of purple water. So I use my rinsing water to get all of that dirty paint water out. Squeeze it off and then lay the paintbrush down. Never leave it in your water pot because the bristles will bend. The weight of the brush at the bottom will bend and it will train your bristles at an angle. And that's really annoying to paint with. Okay, are we ready to get our first creepy trees in there? Fantastic. I am using what looks like a big brush, but it actually has quite a fine point to it. All artists are different and have different preferences. Use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. Now, our trees that are the furthest away are going to be a little bit lighter to show that they are further away, almost transparent. So what we're going to do, using our palette here, I'm gonna add a little bit more white into this purple that I was using in the background. Little bit of white in there, lovely, fantastic. There we go. Now these trees, you're going to see them around this area here. So this color will stand out nicely there. Add a little bit more in there. Now I'm going to loosen it up. I want to sketch with this color and the looser it is, the easier it's going to slide off my brush and onto the surface so I can get some nice, fine, whimsical lines with it. Now, first of all, my ground. So I'm going to come down low on my painting and I'm going to do like a little bit of an arch here. This is my ground. Lovely. I'm going to have dark colors in front of it. This painting is all about the layers, starting with what is furthest away, gradually coming forward. Now, being careful not to bring my ground up too high because this light source is so important, this tunnel of light. This is where our light is coming from. If we didn't have this, we would have a very dark painting. So don't close your light source down. Now, what I'm going to do coming up from the sides is have a couple of tall, creepy trees that lean in, wispy looking, Again, being very careful not to close down my light source. Have fun with this. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna do some kind of Tim Burton style creepy coils in here. I absolutely love those creepy Tim Burton movies and having that slightly jagged look to my branches there. So I've got one creepy curl. I am using the tip of my brush so you don't see my brush laying down. I am using just the point, the very tip, tickling the surface of the canvas, getting some lovely little trees in there. Nice little branches. I'm gonna go through and have a few coming out at the back here. We're gonna build it up one layer at a time, getting a little bit darker every time we add a new color. Another little curl there. Big 
There we go. I have my first layer of creepy trees that are far away. Now what I'm going to do is add another layer of trees and this time they're going to be a little closer towards us. So I'm going to use a stronger color. So let's get that whitey purpley shade off our brush. So that light lilac color into the cleaning water, into the rinsing water, dab on the towel. Now I'm going to use this same puddle again, but I'm going to make it stronger. So red and blue, fold it together. Take your time, play with the ratios of the color. Ratios meaning how much. I went about 50-50 red and blue then. Add more red, add more blue if you need to. You can even do a little splash on your painting to see if it matches. I do like that, that's quite dark there. Very nice, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny spot of white in there. There we go, let's try that one. Yep, I think we've got a winner, that's the color. Okay, so now I want to add another layer of trees that are gonna be a little thicker because they're closer towards us and they're gonna be creeping up and going off the top of the canvas because they're closer towards us. But I don't want to close down and hide everything I've done in the background. Oops, I just put a fingerprint in there. Let's blend that out. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my ground first. Let's just do a nice wave going around here. There we go, pushing it down, not going all the way to the outside because I know I've got more to do. Now my trees are gonna go up from here. I'm gonna do some nice dark shapes that drift out of the painting this time. I'm using a watered down paint so I can always add a second coat over the top to make it darker. Ooh, lovely. Let's do the same over here. I'm gonna have this one arching in a little bit, I think. And get some crooked little bends to it. Oh, I like that. Very nice. It does not take much to build up these paintings. Now I'm going to have some branches coming across and closing down a little bit of my creepy trees in the background. There we go. Maybe have another one coming off of this. So you can tell what layer the trees are by how dark they are. The darker the trees, the closer they are towards us. There, yeah, wonderful. Do another little one here. And this one, we're going to have these coming back as well. My paint's getting a little dry, so I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. And I want another dark one coming over here. The more my trees cross over my light trees behind and my darker ones in front, the more depth I am able to create. So I'm really not afraid of layering my trees up and creating a very busy looking creepy forest with lots of dense trees. Well, there's a lot of things you can do to personalize this piece of work. So start thinking about what you could hide in your forest. Perhaps you want a cat sitting on a, a tree somewhere or some pumpkins down on the ground. Totally up to you, whatever you would like to sneak in here. There we go, that's my creepy second layer of trees. So what I'm gonna do now is clean my brush off again in my dirty water and then the clean water. 
dab it on the paper towel. I'm going to rotate my palette because I want the black paint next. Now my paint is a little thicker where it's been drying over here so I'm going to just loosen it up a bit. There we go. Rolling my brush on its side so I'm squeezing a lot of that runny paint out. Now I'm going to start again with the bottom. So I want to come down a little bit further so I still see that lovely purple. And I'm going to do a nice kind of jagged edge. This is my forest floor that's closest towards us. There we go. Now this black is going to go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas. This is your last forestry layer here. There we go, nice and dark. Now it's up to you what kind of shapes and creepy trees you put in. Remember as you are doing this, you do not want to hide all of these beautiful shapes and branches. So think ahead, what can you do? Where can you add your trees? Do you want your branches thick or thin? Perhaps you want some small shrubs down on the forest floor. I'm going to do a little bit of all of that, I think. So first of all, I want a nice dark tree coming up the side. Probably going to do two layers of black on mine as well, where I thinned my paint down so it smooths easily across the canvas. I also diluted the color a little bit and I want it to be powerful and dark, so I will add another coat once I am done. Just create some space here. All right, so I want to take this creepy tree all the way up. I'm trying to get a lot of my trees sitting at angles rather than just straight up and down because I think that makes it a whole lot more interesting. Now there's something about this bit here that's bugging me, these three areas, so I'm going to use my black paint here to hide that. Maybe do a little creepy coil coming in from the side. Again, you're going to have something totally different to me. No two creepy forests are going to be the same. Look at yours. Work with what you have. If you've got shapes going on in yours that you really like, like I love these creepy curls, go for it. Add some more. Just be careful not to hide all of the beautiful details that you've done behind. So always be aware of what you're painting on top of. Maybe a couple tiny little shrubs coming up as well. There we are, lovely. So I'm going to spend a second filling in my background, filling in my black creepy trees.
There we go, guys. I've got my creepy forest in there. Now I'm gonna clean off in one and then the other. Now I'm gonna switch up to a small paintbrush, wet the bristles to get a nice point. And I'm gonna use black again because I've decided I want a nice creepy owl in my painting. You could do a bat, you could do the silhouette of a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern. This is your creepy forest. You could have the silhouette of zombies coming through yours if you want to, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna have my owl, hmm, I think sitting on this little creepy curl here. So I'm doing like an oval shape for my owl's body. Not a very big owl. Owls are not huge. That's going to come up to two pointy looking ears. There we go. That's all I'm doing for my owl. It will make more sense when I get the eyes on there in a second. Now, whilst you're using a small paintbrush, if you've decided to do this step, you can also use this small brush to make some of the ends of your branches a little bit thinner. This does help to add to the creepiness. Something about very thin, spindly branches that make your painting look extra creepy. It's up to you. If you prefer the chunkier look, leave it as it is. You can carry on working into yours as much as you like. The more little branches you have reaching off, the deeper and denser your creepy forest is going to look. It is up to you. You are the artist. There we go. Added just a couple more creepy ones. Now, cleaning off my brush. What I need is some creepy eyes. So my forest is alive. There are creatures out here. So I'm gonna do a couple little sets of eyes down low in my deep dark forest here. Now you can use a very fine brush. If you don't have a fine brush, you can use a sharp pencil. You can even use the stump, the back of your brush. And this is what I'm going to do. Use the back of my brush. I am going into my white paint, picking up a pretty good dollop on the back. Now let's think, where am I gonna do my eyes? I'm gonna have a couple different sets coming out through. So down here, one, Two, oh, look at that, there's something down there watching us. Little bit creepy. And let's do some over here as well. Oh, I like that yellow. Yellow would also make lovely, creepy eyes coming out of this too. I'll do some down here. And then my owl, of course my owl needs some little eyes. So tiny little dollop, one, two, there we go, so my owl's got some big eyes watching us. And maybe I'll just do one more set. Let's find a nice deep dark area up here. Something is up in the tree watching us as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Now that's really all you need for your creepy forest. If you've used the back of your paintbrush like me, make sure you wipe off the paint at the end before you put it down or you'll end up getting white paint everywhere and wonder how it got there. Now, before you call it a day, make sure all of your brushes are cleaned off. Take one more good look over your creepy forest. Take a break if you need to. Come back with fresh eyes. Is there a branch that's annoying you because it's a little bit too crooked? Do you want to change it? Do you need more creepy eyes? Did you do too many creepy eyes? If you did, once it dries, go over it with black. Maybe even change one of the sets of eyes to a different color, maybe yellow. That would be fantastic against the purples or even a red. Now that is our creepy forest done. If you want to do a little more creepifying to your forest, I'm gonna show you one extra thing you can do. So we do have a spectacular looking forest right there. It can be done. You can hang it up. You can carry on working into it. It's yours to do what you would like with. I am going to add some creepy cobwebs over the surface of my painting to make it look even creepier. Now, these cobwebs, they come out every year at Halloween. You can buy them from most stores, super cheap and super stretchy. If you don't have these, you can even use cotton buds and stretch them out. 
Now, with this, a little bit goes a long way. Spend time prepping it first. Stretch it out. If you add your cobwebs really thick, you're going to end up covering your painting. One very, very important tip, though. Make sure your painting is dry before you stretch this over. If the black is not dry or the white is not dry, you're going to end up streaking that over the surface. Now, all you need to do, lift your painting up, find somewhere you want to hook it, and pull it out in another direction. So you can see I've hooked mine over the top there. And I'm going to have mine coming down. Like I said, it doesn't take much. There we go. And I'm going to spend a minute just adjusting my cobwebs. Let's have these ones going up here, actually. Oh, this is fun. Just playing around with them. I don't like how that shoots straight across the center, so I'm going to have that coming down. Oop, stretching it pulling it over. I guess I want them a little thicker at the top. There we go. Keep having a play around with yours. And there. This time I really am done. I've got a layer of awesome creepy looking cobwebs stretched out over the surface of my painting. Now you don't have to add the cobwebs, that's totally up to you. Do as many as you like or take them off altogether if it's not working for you. The cobwebs are actually a really awesome addition to any of your creepy festive paintings, not just this one. Now that was a super quick, really fun little painting building up our creepy forest in layers. Four simple layers, our background, our trees that were furthest away, slightly closer and closest with a couple of creepy eyes. Now the options for this are endless. You could do creepy anything. We talked about having zombies coming through the forest, perhaps a witch on a broomstick. Maybe you can even hide a full moon through the branches of your trees. You could do whatever you like for yours. Whatever you choose to do, remember the most important thing is that you have fun. I would absolutely love to see your creepy creations, so please share them in the comments on Facebook or Instagram. You can even upload them through the student portal on Virtual Macart.